I'm going to demonstrate my three-step guide to making your first two-color monotype. I use this method with my students aged between 9 and 13 years as their first monotype experience. It's a great beginner's activity because it generates lots of excitement and ideas for future prints. And my students love it because it is so tactile and it has that special wow moment as each student pulls their print off the ink. A monotype, sometimes called a monoprint, is a unique or one-off image printed from a polished surface that has printing ink rolled onto it or painted or drawn onto it so that paper can be pressed onto the inky surface to take an impression. There are several different techniques for achieving a monotype image as you can see in these examples. By Camille Pissarro, two by Edgar Degas, two by Paul Gauguin, Henri Matisse, Cathy Cullis, Anthony Caro, Therese Alton, the Brazilian artist Sabello, and the animation artists of Conic Studio. Here's how I get ready by creating a drawing. I'm going to do an image that just is very roughly like this. So first of all, what I need is some white paper. And I just use a black marker pen. Uh, marker pen is great, better than pencil, because the thickness of the lines is similar to the thickness of the lines that you'll be able to achieve in the monoprint. And then I'm going to use, as you can see, yellow and orange. So I've got some marker pens here. Now the other piece of paper that I need is the paper that I'm going to be printing on because with two color we are going to prepare this by putting the color area in first. Now this is how it works. So first of all I'm going to very simply, because it's easier, put this sun shape in the middle and uh, that's going to be there and then I'm going to maybe have these um, haystacks here and, and some lines suggesting a field those are going to be white, this background is going to be dark, and then a horizon here, and maybe some other trees in there, something like that, and more of this ground here. Maybe some marks in the sky. So that's going to be where my picture is, and the reason I'm doing the sketch here is because I need to cut this area out. But before I do, I will lay my piece of printing paper over the top of that, and you can see through it, and now I'm going to color this area here, and what I'm going to do is color a larger area than the drawing. So I want some overlap, because this will make printing easier, and you'll see how this will work. So that's the area I'm going to use. Let's have a much stronger color yellow. In that area, fill this in. Because it's thin paper, I have to be careful that I don't press too hard and that I don't get this paper too wet with the marker pen because that could just tear a hole in my paper and I don't want that. So I'm going to create kind of a swirling, spirally sun or planet in my sky and I think I might also give it some texture, maybe with a red sharpie pen here. Quite a fiery, magical sun in there. Okay. So that's the paper that I'm going to print on. So I put that aside, and what I do now is I want to cut this shape out. And the reason I'm cutting this out is we're going to use this when we're printing to mask off the ink so that we get our colored sun showing through in the print. So you can see that in this I've masked off an area with white paper. I'm masking off the area here. So those are the things that I need to prepare and get ready before I start using the ink I need an area of ink here that I'm then going to draw into. So the things I've got to use for drawing 
are just some wooden cutlery, some wooden skewers, and some cotton buds. And I can also create paper shapes, more paper shapes, if I want to. And I'm thinking that I might create these haystack-like things out of um, paper and put them in there. So this is what I have in mind for those. I'm going to just cut these out. This one here. And then I'm just going to give them a bit of texture as well. So there's one piece, there's my sun or planet or whatever it is. And here will be the second haystack. Get those papers, pieces of paper right out of the way so that they don't get into the ink. Okay, there I am. So now, this is the area I'm going to use. So I just estimate how much I need there, the size of that area, put that paper aside, and now I work with my roller. Now in this um, mono printing, what I find is that sometimes the ink is not quite runny enough. So that's why I have this acrylic medium. And what I've found that is just a few drops of this, very, very tiny amount, into the ink can sometimes make all the difference when it comes to working with the ink here. Now you'll notice there that already it's much kind of gooier. All right, so now I'm just going to actually spread the ink here. I'm not too worried about getting an even spread on the roller because I can do that here in this area. Keeping an eye on the total area of the drawing that I wanted. And you notice that the ink is really quite gooey compared with the consistency of ink that we would use for a lino cut or for a relief block print. Because I want this ink to remain wet for quite a while. Of course, the wetter it is, the trickier it is to create lines, right? So you'll see this. If I create a kind of furrow line for my field, notice that I've used just one part of the cotton bud and I've pushed the ink away. And this is the and now I'm going to turn, I'm going to use the other end and I'm going to do it again and get a little wobble in there. And now I'm going to throw that away because that's got so much ink on it now, it won't be any good for doing another line. Push one in, turn it over and see that already if I move it from side to side, It doesn't move the ink because what we're doing is with each touch of this, we are lifting ink from the surface. Okay. We go through quite a few cotton buds doing this, but it's worth it for the effect. Now what happens if I use something that's finer? I use the same approach. So here are these skewers, they've got a pointy end and a blunt end. And I like to use the blunt end, again, for pushing. Like this. And actually, because it's a wooden stick and not a, it's not soft, you can use this several times and you still get the effect coming through. What happens if we use the fork? This is kind of interesting. I'm going to need to press quite firmly to get all four there and I'll maybe just do some streaky clouds in the sky here 
And then I can use the wider side, the handle, and make that line a little bit thicker. Or I can use the edge and produce a line here. Now I wonder if I'm going to, um, I'm going to just be a little bit tricky and create a kind of a shadow effect. So I'm getting some ink on here and I'm going to put a shadow there and another shadow there. And now you'll see that why I did that, because I'm going to put that haystack there and this haystack here. And then I'm going to put my, I have to be careful that I don't get any ink on top of these. I'm going to put my sun there. So now I'm ready for printing and all of this area is clean, but if I accidentally got some ink on the outside surface, I could mask it with the, t with the paper that I prepared. So here's my paper. This is the side I drew on. So I'm going to turn that over and then I have to be very careful that I know where that masked area is. And there you see it. Can you see that I've got that Mask area in the middle of the color. Okay, now, do you think we're ready? Let's see what that print is like. I think we've probably got quite a good impression. So here it is. Here's our monoprint, a simple, quick way of doing a two-color monoprint. What do you think? Is that something you would like to try?